Hi, I'm currently dying, and I would like to schedule a consultation. Sarah. Hi there. I'm sure you're familiar with the process. <laughs> when you know you're going to die, you can have yourself cloned. You have very clean skin. I like your shirt. But life has thrown you a curveball. You're not dying anymore. The duel to the death will be in approximately one year. Wait, did you say duel to the death? You can't have two of you walking around forever. That would be ridiculous. Do you want to live? Yes. I don't believe you. I may be a size smaller than you. I'm going to kill her. A properly trained human body is a weapon. You're pretending to be me while I'm still alive? Even if I can't be with her, I don't want to be with you. Always use the gun if it's an option. Stab. I find guns to be boring and overused. If it's the difference between life and death, it's okay to be boring. Your mental tricks aren't going to work. Taking over my life was the plan, not stealing it. This is my life. She's not going to take it from me. What are my chances? Zero. Nothing is ever absolutely certain, though this most certainly is. I really value your friendship. I'll miss that when you die. Speaking of which, any updates? So, uh, Saman and I were talking, and we wanted to uh, dissect your origin story a bit. Okay. For the first part. <laughs> how, yeah, see, nice. how Bruce, nice. how, see how Bruce Wayne became Batman kind of yeah. thing. You know? Yeah. <laughs> so, where were you born? No. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean, actually, yeah. Like, you know, like, like start from like the earliest thing, you know, that's like the first memory, the first memory or the first like thing that psychologically you feel kind of just was like, boop, the beginning of Riley. You know what I mean? Well, it's funny, the, the first memory I have is being in this uh, duplex that my parents uh, were in, in Illinois, crawling up the stairs. I remember crawling up the stairs for some reason, and I've been able to kind of describe it to them. And they're like, that's the duplex we lived in. So like, I, it is funny how your brain can go back that far sometimes, but that's probably like the oldest memory that I have. And how old it has were no you relation to. I was probably like one and a half. Nice. Like so, so I, I so there's I a guess metaphor already that you have at one and a half what well, one point five, you know? Climbing those stairs, like Climbing trying to stairs. Be, trying to get higher. Yeah, yeah, that's great. All no, right, I don't I don't think one? that I don't think that that informed who I am as a person, but uh, it's a funny thing to be able to think. <laughs> no, back I on. mean it's it's the yeah. seed of it. You couldn't you couldn't emote anything else, but I'm sure there's something there. But what's the what's the next thing you think? Uh, man, I remember being like three and one day just being like, is it my birthday? And then my mom going, yeah, it is. <laughs> just like, just ask. I probably asked that like all the time, but for some reason I asked it that day and it actually was. And so that stands out as a weird random memory too. That yeah. I mean, that is a very weird detail where you're not even like, you don't even, <laughs> it's almost like, did you understand the concept or were yeah. you just like, so doing something else that you're like my birthday, you know? Exactly. Like, so I don't, I don't know, but th those, those two are probably my earliest memories. And, um, and then it starts to get fuzzy from there. But it, but this is but this is good because like each of them are like it seems like an upgrade. Let's see number three. What's the next one? <laughs> I was probably twelve, and uh, no, I I honestly don't like that kind of stuff. Is funny to think about, but yeah, I, I I don't have a lot of those. I think there are people who remember like really really early things about them their life, and for me, I think it's more like once you start getting into daycare and yeah things like that. I guess I remember that a little yeah, bit easier. You know what's interesting? This is just an observation, but I feel like highly sensitive people have stronger memories and obviously i'm no psychologist or anything but whenever i ask people that are um that deem themselves like to be highly sensitive uh it seems like their memory retention is a lot higher than 
Yeah. Than other I think, people. I also think people a... who are happier have bad memories. <laughs> that's my theory. But yeah, I, I, I would I would say that sounds kind of right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I I don't know. I don't I don't know what category right I'd put Riley in, sensitive, not sensitive. I'm sure there's both I feel like I'm but I feel like I'm fairly sensitive. I feel like my memory also, it's not necessarily that I have a great memory, but I remember very specific things. I was the friend in high school who would always be like, remember when you said that one thing? And they'd be like, how do you remember that? And I always had the just like weird things that would stick with me for some reason. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. Like this, As opposed like, to like, like Jurassic Park came out June, 1993, you know, that kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. Or just like, Oh, remember when you said that one thing, that one way, and it has no real importance, but for some reason, my brain decided oh. to file that. Yes. Huh. yes. Yeah. That yeah. would make, I, I, yeah. Go ahead. Oh. Sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say, I was going to say that would make sense because, uh, you have very, uh, like very nuanced sort of like uh, moments in a lot of your films. And it feels very, uh, I don't know. It, it, it just like feels like idiosyncratic you. sort of uh, yeah. thing, I guess about that, which I could see. And, and like the way that I write tends to have some of those idiosyncrasies in it as well. So I, yeah, totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. What's the, what's when you get, you said that your kind of memories ish start like preschool in that era, I guess like what, like if you ever in a creative world, when you kind of, you know, we always examine ourselves as like the younger person, or we're trying to get back to like the roots, like what, what sort of the earliest memory that comes to mind, really not necessarily an actual factual, the earliest memory, what's the earliest memory that comes to mind where you feel like filmmaking or storytelling or creating sort of happened or a question, like what, 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 what comes to mind? I mean, in terms of storytelling, uh, I, I wasn't a big movie kid growing up. So uh, it was more when you'd have a writing assignment or something. I, I feel like uh, even just some of the stuff in my like quote unquote baby book that my mom has, which is basically just a folder with a lot of our, my sister and my art and, and writings when we were in elementary school. And if I look back at that, I, I see that I liked telling stories. I liked writing out uh, like we in fifth grade, I think we had to do something on dinosaurs and you had to like make a book about a dinosaur character. And so like I had this Demetrodon character and I wrote out this whole, has this whole arc. And then you can tell when I probably probably got bored with it because it just ends really fast. And you just, I probably at that age was just like, eh, that's good enough. Like, okay. And then you draw it out. And, and I, I remember things like that always feeling cool, but it wasn't like I was drawn to writing or, or storytelling. Uh, it was just like when it was an assignment, I would, I would at least, I, I would dive into it uh, pretty enthusiastically. Uh, I was really into music from a fairly early age and, and I, I never like had any formal instruction or anything, but that was where I thought I was going to be. When I was younger, I wanted to be a bass player in a band. And um, it wasn't until later, like high school, uh, that I started having a, an interest in film. Why Why uh, bass though? Like, I, I feel like that's it, it's very focused <laughs> and particular. And I know yeah. I this, so I'm just like, what, what's, what do you, where do you, what do you think if you were to analyze why bass? I think there's a couple of reasons, but uh, the, the main one just was uh, there was a friend that already had his drum set. And then there were the friends that wanted to get their guitars. And so I was like, well, what's the other thing? And <laughs> one of my friends who had a guitar said, well, there's this thing called bass. So it's like just filling out that space. But then I think what ended up really being nice about it and kind of relates to my personality and why I didn't want to be a director at first, even when I started getting into movies, is that I was never really the front man kind of guy. Like I liked being in the background. I didn't like having the spotlight on me. And I think that that's why writing uh, features was enticing initially because I could kind of lay the rhythm of everything like the bass player, but I wouldn't have to be the one, the, the lead yeah. lead man, like uh, talking to the crowd in between songs and everything, directing the actors. It was more just like, I just want to tell the story and then somebody else can, can see that through. And it, that eventually uh, became something I got over and realized that mm -hmm. I, I actually wanted to see the story all the way through. Um, but yeah, I think it was just initially just personality wise, I was kind of okay being in the background. Mm -hmm. How did you get started in to writing? I mean, did you first start writing? Um, like, did you first start journaling or writing poems or writing lyrics or like what, what would you say is kind of like the first, um, the first steps to your writing process? 
When I actually decided that writing could be a thing that I was interested in, uh, I was visiting my ex-wife's an actor. She's one of the leads of my first film. And um, I was getting to visit sets that she was on and see how films were made and kind of dawned on me uh, in a weird way, which sounds funny now, but I, I was like, oh, people actually make these things. Like you, you had all, I had only ever seen them. And so you don't know what goes into the, the, the creating process on them. So getting to be behind the scenes, I, I kind of saw what the jobs were. And I was talking a lot to one of the writers on a film that she was doing and and realized that I my personality kind of lined up with his. And I was like, maybe the writing thing could be my thing. So I started with, I think I initially just said, okay, I need to learn how this formatting thing works. And I wrote a, a story that I thought was going to be a feature and it ended up only getting to 40 pages before I was like, there's no story here anymore. And it, it was awful, just got awful. And, but it at least like got me over that hump of writing something longer and, and realizing yeah. like things that I was interested in. And, and from mm -hmm. there, it, it was a lot of just me being a copycat. I would try different styles of writing I, uh, by filmmakers that I was influenced by or at the time watching. Uh, so I had my like Tarantino ripoff. I had my script that was probably like a Wes Anderson ripoff. I had my, uh, uh, what else I would say like, Oh, Michelle Gondry or something like that sort of mm -hmm. rip off. And, mm -hmm. and I, what was great about that period, even though all of those things are horrible and I hate that they ever made it into <laughs> anybody's hands and that they had to read them. But uh, I, I really liked that. I got to figure out my voice through mimicking. So I figured out what I wasn't and, and instead figured out like how I actually do yeah. speak and in, in terms of, of, of storytelling. Interesting. I, I feel like that. I mean, if you think about it, that's kind of what we do as children, right? We mimic yep. people. We just say words. So it's like there is an interesting like elementary quality where like the things we learn on the basics as a child that just gets transferred over to like the adult goals or this, the, the world goals. So I think there is something interesting there. Do you like at what stage do you feel like Riley came to be like, like when did Bruce Wayne full like go, okay, I'm going to try this version of Batman. I'm gonna try this version of Batman. That's kind of what you just said. What's the like, I get what I am. What is, when do you know I am vengeance? You know, I think the easiest uh, sort of benchmark would be when I made the short called the cub, which played at Sundance in 2013. I, saw, I, I think that, that that's, that that's the one where I would say that I, I tinkered with a short before that, uh, that I think was in the same sort of style and tone, but that was the first one where I was like, this is very me. And it just felt natural. And uh, since then, everything I've written, I yeah. felt very comfortable with. It feels very yeah. much from me. The Cub, yeah, I, I watched The Cub again just to kind of you know catch up and prepare for this interview. Um, and I mean, I even watched like uh, this uh, this interview that you did with Vice. So funny, so long ago. I know, little, yeah, little baby boy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, I know. Um, but. Uh, I don't, yeah, there's something really interesting because you were talking about, you know, like uh, you're writing it and then you're like, well, how am I supposed to get wolves in it? And then you're like, wait a second, I just won't write the wolves in. And yeah, um, and then it but, becomes part of the style. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, I think, yeah, there's a very, um, I can see how that short film created this thread to where Duel came from and to where your other films have come from, you know, yeah. that kind of like creative um, sort of like auteur cinema. There's a through know. line it's, between it's, them. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting mm -hmm. because I, I met you, I don't know if you remember, but I met you at, uh, not at Sundance, but at South by, you remember? When I remember. We, I think we all had shorts in the Vimeo hall or whatever. And it was so time. funny thinking back on that. Yeah. I saw, I, I, I was the first one. They did this thing called director's commentary, which is yeah. they would show all the shorts and then they would show them again, which is just a dumb idea. Yeah. And uh, so you'd watch it all the way through and then you they went back and would show it again and you'd sit up on stage with a microphone and you'd talk <laughs> like director's commentary live. And I thought I was just going to get up there and wing it and it was going to come out. And it was the worst experience of my life. I did not have anything prepared. I didn't know what to say. Uh, it ended up just being me like going, yeah, it was fun fun to do that. And, uh, and then Simon gets up there and he and Isaac just like, had it down they're just like <laughs> going <laughs> and it made me look so bad but no, no dude, you were great it was because i didn't you know i was friends with michael i was friends with isaac i was friends with all these people who are friends with you and i'm like who the hell's riley like why don't i why am i not friends with riley like everyone's <laughs> talking about him and then there's this like adorable guy that goes hey 
how you doing? We did this and you were, you were adorable, dude. It was like super funny, even if it was like awkward and weird for you. Like it was <laughs> definitely, you were definitely the icebreaker though. Like everybody yeah. definitely like went woo and chilled well, they're out. Like, well, I guess when you set the bar that low, it makes it easy for everyone else. No, to go it was not you. low, dude. I learned a lot. And I, it definitely <laughs> like, I knew kind of who you were very early, even though I think like, I don't even know if you were into like martial arts then and stuff. You look totally At different. Point, at that point, I did look, I, I think I had just started jujitsu uh, uh, in 2012. So I'd probably been doing it a year when when we started like being uh, uh, introduced to each other. So, and I, I lost at least 30 pounds, maybe 40 pounds. Uh, I, I definitely have changed quite a bit since I've started that. Wow. Yeah, even just, even just like, even just the, like the way you speak too, like you're, there's definitely like a growth and it's, it's interesting because I, I didn't know you prior to that, but I guess like I've technically known you since then. And then I've had, mm. we've had check-ins and chats and I follow you on Instagram and I can just see sort of your own personal growth and kind of like, you know, my assumptions of what you've been through, but also just the little glimpses I have. And like, yeah. there is this, I don't want to say like, there's this confidence, but there is this ability to understand the communicative site and the performing uh, job of a director, the sort of song yeah. and dance that has to be done. And you just get better and better at it. You know, every time you do, I it's a muscle. People, yeah. Like there's, well, I growth. appreciate you noticing that. I mean, it's definitely something that I notice myself. I, I feel like if you go back and watch that interview that, uh, that you're referencing, which the, they, recorded. The cub, they recorded, they oh, recorded all of it. <laughs> well, that too. Yeah. But like, if you go and watch the interview with the cub, uh, that Vi did for vice, I am deer in the headlights. I say like and ah uh, every other word. And I think there's just a confidence that comes, like you said, I think it comes with age in general, but I do think that uh, jujitsu gave me confidence that I didn't have before and practicing, yeah. like it, releasing three films in, uh, in the past, I guess, eight or so years, you get practice talking about films and it gets easier every time. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So um, to switch, uh threads a little bit but i really wanted to talk about duel specifically but where did that where did the initial idea come from initially i wrote a short called niche that i was going to do between faults and the art of self defense my two first features and it didn't end up ever happening and i i recycled the idea as a music video pitch and then the band ended up saying it was a little too comedic for them i think they were looking for something a little bit more serious and then i just let the idea die and in it, a character ends up in a time loop and meets their future self. And so I really liked the idea of still trying to do something where a character confronts themselves, whether it was like in that instance, a future version of them or what ended up being for Duel was the clone sort of version. Uh, I love doppelganger stories. I love uh, uh, confronting oneself. I love uh, introspection and, and all of that that comes from that type of a, a story. But at the end of the day, it really was just like a desire to see that visual uh, and came up with the idea for the initial concept of if you know that you're going to die, you can have yourself cloned so that your family doesn't have to miss you. Still didn't feel like that was enough. And so uh, through asking questions about the concept, I came up with the question, uh, what would happen if you went into remission and immediately knew the answer to that was, well, duel yourself to the death, obviously. And that's where duel came from. At that point, I, I felt like I knew the, where the movie started, uh, what the middle of it was and where the ending would be. And, uh, to this day, that's the structure that it still has. Wow. That's really cool. I mean, it's interesting because like, you know, I remember, do you remember, we, I forget what we were talking about, but we met, I think it was for the Doors anthology. We met mm -hmm. and we were talking and I, you know, I think at that point you were just like, you know, can't do it, focus on this feature, but like you were very inquisitive about what is it? <laughs> like, what are we doing? What is this thing? And I remember you having this kind of interesting look at introspection, almost like the way, you know, your characters kind of have that, like looking at themselves in a mirror sort of moments. It's like, I remember your analysis of yourself was, you know, and, and I didn't, I didn't know where it was coming from because it's like, I don't know what people's relationships are you, to you and things, but like, you kind of mentioned like my dialogue is not how people talk. And like, and I, I'm okay with that. Like, they're going to just talk this way, you know? And it was just like this really, like, again, it was almost like a combination of talking out loud, but also like talking to me about your style. But it was, it was before art of self-defense. It was like when I think you casted the movie, like you just yeah. signed everybody up or something. That sounds so, right. I don't, yeah. And so like there was this whole um, element and it's just it is funny because it's like I try not to let other like the filmmakers view sort of like taint my view of something. But it's like 
there is a self-awareness that I find in your films that are like very equivalent to like a Jim Jarmusch or these just like really fucking sick directors that just know like that's what I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it's amazing because it's like more exciting and thrilling. And I can see even the examples you were copycatting. I could see like what you pulled from them and what felt like, oh, I, this part's kind of me. That part's kind of me. You know, the, this and, and even like I was thinking like Killing of a Sacred Deer, like the tone of Duel kind of had that disturb it was like disturbing but like more loving though it was like kill killing the same yeah. definitely like punishment like my parents were traumatized and like bubba why'd you show me that shit you know but like <laughs> this movie had more love but it was just but it, it was like scary to me because it was like yeah like when she throws up like blood and shit i was just like what you know like yeah. it was just like really um and it's so interesting because it's like it still feels like you though, because you're so gentle and sweet, but it's like, I know you have demons. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> nobody, does, nobody does BJJ or Thai, you know, Muay Thai and they don't have fucking demons. Are you kidding me? You know what yeah. I mean? Like you want to destroy in a loving way. It's like, yeah. come on, you know, it's definitely like, I don't know, like somehow you do it so well in this kind of very composed. And, you know, it's like your movies almost are like somebody ready to go postal, you know? And yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> it's funny you say, yeah, like Aaron Stewart on a friend of, I think, you know, Aaron too, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah. So Aaron one day was just like, I guess you're just because he knew how kind of like positive and happy go lucky I am. And he was like, your movies are so fucked up. Is that just like you getting that out? Is it how you're not a fucked up person or whatever? And I never really thought of it that way. And I don't think it's an intentional thing, but I think if people met me, uh, they would, uh, especially people who uh, are, are fans of the movie, but don't know anything about me. Like they would probably be very surprised that I'm the person that makes the throw up blood movie. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I'm in the same boat. I think everybody thinks I'm just like a funny dude. And it's just like, I'm a, no, I'm fucked up. <laughs> but it's like, but there's like a, but the, it we is, all are in our own way. Yeah. It is interesting, though, because I do I do believe art is like an extra component. You know what I mean? And, and it is. I do think that like it is interesting because like I, 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 you know, obviously, I don't think we've been able to like hang out enough. But it's like I do love that you're you and your movies are this. And like I see I see the charm. I see the connection, but it's like, yeah, they are not a full mirror of you. They just, they just don't, they're just not. And it's like, yeah. that's crazy. It's always like, it's like when you watch like a filmmaker, that's like a cr incredibly boring human and their shit's fucking crazy good. And you're just like, yeah. when you talk, you're like, no, I don't really like this. I don't like what this is, but I want to go back to your movie now. You know, it's like, yeah. but like you're two awesome things that just don't seem the same, but somehow it makes sense. And that, that's kind of why the origin story was interesting to me. Cause it was like the, the first thing that you said that was like, that's very Riley movie was like, it's my birthday today. You know, like that's yeah. like, that's like a line in your movie. It's like, people don't talk <laughs> like that. What the fuck? You know? Yeah. My sister's <laughs> the one who I, I think for the while I was like, well, I mean, nobody talk like everyone in my movies talks uh, in a very specific way. And, <laughs> and nobody really talks like that. And Rossi, my sister is like, you talk exactly like your characters. And I'm like, no, yeah. I don't. I And she's like, Riley, you talk exactly like them. So I think I've just embraced the fact that that's normal for me. And obviously it's a heightened version, but I do tend to speak in a way that <laughs> like my characters talk. I think that's why it's easy for me to write that way and why it feels so natural. Uh, and it's funny that some people think that it's completely uh, like me doing a Yorgos thing or something like that. I, I feel like obviously it's yeah. impossible for me to like lie and say that I'm not inspired by his work, but I also feel like this is just naturally the way that my characters are going to talk. And it's, yeah. it feels normal to me. It's I, not, I a feel like tracking thing. all your work is totally. Yeah. No, I don't see that. I, I see the similarity, but I don't like, for example, when the, like the, the doctor goes, like, she goes, this is nothing wrong with me. And she goes, no, there's something wrong with you. But well, there's most definitely and it's something like, wrong. No, it talks like that. <laughs> it's just, but it's great. Yeah, it, that doctor's but also psych psychopathic or uh, 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 psychotic and, and uh, yeah. yeah. Like sociopathic, but I mean, but I love yeah, it. I was mixing me. up some words there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here's here's the interesting part is like why your shit is so deep to me because like I think some people would go ha ha, ha. like I can imagine watching that as like South by or something and everyone goes ha ha, ha. and to me I, I'm not a I don't laugh out loud a lot like I laugh in my head like I I have this weird processing where like all of those moments were funny but I don't emote it because it immediately triggers the truth behind it and to me I'm like. Western medicine is sociopathic. You've removed all emotion. Everything is just this and this and this. They have sucked all the Eastern and Middle Eastern and African, and then they just turned it into a pill, right? That's like the metaphor. And so to me, I'm like, that's truth. Doctors are sociopaths, you know, yeah. like, and that you just said subtext. That's the only difference is you just are saying what the fucking doctor says in some 
bureaucratic, helpful, disconnected way so that they can live their lives. You know, <laughs> so it's like to me, there's just so much layers to what uh, most people would find hu- like humor, you know, and I, and I think that's that's what's so paralyzing about like, I think everything you make, there's just something that makes me feel uncomfortable and, and tense because there's truth behind it. And it scares me that like, maybe a lot of people won't actually see that because there's so many of these other little nooks and crannies yeah. that they, they choose. It's like your movies are great for people who like want to find their little hole to go into. And like, for me, for some reason, I just feel like whenever I leave one of your films or whenever I'm talking, it's like, I, I just, I'm like, nobody sees the same movie I see, you know what yeah. I mean? And I don't know, like I'm, I'm autistic. So like, I don't actually see the world at all, like the way other people do. And it's like, it makes, I, I just see things weird. And so there's like an autism in your films that I'm like attracted to because I'm just like, no, no, no I get it. I get it. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm not, I'm not diagnosed, but I've realized as I've gotten older that uh, obviously <laughs> it's called a spectrum for a reason, but I'm realizing yeah. more and more that I have some elements that are most certainly on a, a spectrum of sorts. And um, what, how that kind of comes out in my work, I think is, is like you said, it's just seeing things slightly different. It's uh, engaging in conversations in a slightly different way. And 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 I, I like that I don't really hold people's hands uh, yeah. with my movies and, mm-hmm. and not in a way that it's like, I'm keeping them at bay. Like I want them to walk with me, but I'm not going to like guide them. Yeah. Uh, no, too. I think that's great. Yeah. I think, and that's also like the loving way to like speak to an audience, you know what I mean? Not treating them dumb, you know? And, yeah. you, and you just, and I guess I, I, I'm, I'm sort of stealing the mic. I want your Sheena to go. <laughs> I'm getting it. <laughs> <laughs> the next question. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good, man. You're good. No, I, I was just, I mean, I'm, I'm curious about more like writing process kind of things. You know, I was curious if you, uh, like, do you tend to write every day or do you, you know, do you, do you write in a journal and then do you write, you know, like, how is that process for you? Uh, I don't write unless I'm writing a script. So I pretty much just save that for that, that specific time. Uh, but I think about ideas a lot, not an idea person, in the sense that I, I don't have stockpiles of ideas, but once I come up with the idea that I know is going to be the next feature or I think could be the next feature, then I just kind of like let it sit with me for a while. I let it percol- percolate. And, uh, once I feel like ready to go to the next step. That's almost always going to be carting out the story. I like, cause I coming from a TV background and in the sense that I was uh, an assistant and worked my way up the ladder and became a staff writer on a TV show before doing my own shorts. Uh, I found cards the most helpful way for me to structure out things. Mm-hmm. Like I liked, I like the visual of a card. I like being able to rearrange cards uh, and then make mm. a gap knowing that there's going to be something or multiple things that fit in that gap, but like being okay that that's not there yet. And eventually when that card fits in and you know that it's right, it, it, it you feel it. So mm. I, I like that, that sort of path that usually will lead to an outline though. I didn't do an outline for dual. I went straight from cards to the script. Yeah. Uh, and then after outline, uh, then it's script. And that's usually a two week process for mm. me. I, I like to just get it over with in a, in a good way. Like I, I feel like um, there are people who write like a page and they go, all right, it's not coming today. But I, when I sit down to write a script, I, I treat it like a, a job and uh, you're writing for at least like eight hours that day, trying to get at least 10 pages. I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good about that. Hmm. Nice. That's interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely, um, yeah. I have like weird breakdowns of my drafts. Like I believe draft one sucks and it's just like get to the finish line. And, I, and because I have an ability to like, cause I have ADD, it's also like very objective narrow. So it is, I do, I, I appreciate cause like I'm very like 10 page a day. Doesn't matter if it's vomit yeah. 10 pages a day. And then I often break it. But then what's nice is I have the day where I, I get through only five and it's not about like, I don't have it today. It's usually like I go, I, you know, I follow like the Murakami schedule, which is by 4 PM I'm done. You know what I mean? And so I just go, all right, time to watch some Kung Fu and rom-coms. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I turn it off and treat myself because it's, if you can become so self-abusive. Definitely. I, I, I definitely mm. relate to that sort of just get, you know, it's like, it's like a script is kind of like never done almost. It kind of feels like it just constantly grows and knowing that seems, to, it, it's weird because I feel like your style definitely, it makes sense. But yeah, I, I'm very surprised. I was surprised actually though, that you like, cause I, I followed you on Instagram when you were talking about dual. And I think you even said the fucking name of the film you were working on. Yeah. And yeah. Like, I remember you showing your card process and it was so fascinating. Cause I'm like, 
the movies are so weird yet you have a lot of these like structural things that like are taught in film school yeah. and so like, that was fascinating to me because if i just broke down if i didn't know who you were i would have been like this but guy fuck like that- paint while he writes yeah you know? is, that, is that a structural thing that they teach in film school like writing down index cards and rearranging them and such I mean, I wasn't in film school and I don't know what they're like. I'm sure they're different. Like, yeah. Scene cards is teach. what they call them. Yeah. They, okay. they, they, they scene cards and you put them up and then you just kind of like yeah. see your movie painted out, you know? Um, the way that I look at it uh, is it, I kind of compare it to, I like knowing that the building is structurally sound uh, before I start decorating it. So I'm looking at the, the framework, making sure that everything is going to hold. And then you can start in the writing process. It's like putting up the walls and, then after that, you decorate it however you want to do it. But like, for me, it's it's as long because I I'm very much a first draft kind of guy. Like I tend to not write beyond that. And uh, for for other people like you, it sounds like it's actually a really freeing thing to go. This is vomit. Like I'm just going to get out, and I can always go back and make it better. I kind of like the idea of all of my re, uh, rough drafts being in my head. And then once I go to script, that's like the final draft. And nice. so I'll make tweaks and stuff as it goes along, as we get closer to production and, and things change. But for the most part, it's it's finished after that first draft. Nice. So it's basically you figure out like with the, with the note index cards and stuff like that, you kind of figure out the puzzle. And then if it's sound, you just write it basically. Exactly. That's how, and so that's why I feel like my process of the two weeks is pretty easy, uh, relatively speaking, because I know that the structure is sound. I know that I, I'm coming at it from a place where like, I'm going to get to find some fun things as I'm writing. Uh, and you, you explore, you, you learn things about the character that maybe you didn't know when you were carding it. Yeah. And like, for example, with faults, I, uh, there was a very, very important thing that ended up, uh, it wasn't in my outline or the cards, but when, uh, for, I, I guess it, I don't know if y'all have watched it recently, but, uh, Leland Orser's character, Ansel, uh, locks Claire in the bathroom. And in the beginning of the, the movie, he like turns the lock around. So it only locks from the outside. So she can't lock herself in, but he can lock her in. And all I wrote in there was he locks her in the bathroom. I'll figure it out later. Like that kind of thought process. And then in the script, I was like, oh, he's going to turn the doorknob around. And then what I couldn't have known is how that then influences the end of the movie where they both get locked in the bathroom together and they're like, they, they're stuck. They can't get out. Uh, And that wouldn't have happened unless I figured out the turning around of the, the doorknob. And that was something that I figured out while writing the script. So there's always those discoveries that that happen. But uh, I knew exactly where it was going. I think I just in the script uh, or sorry, in the outline for faults, I think it said uh, Claire breaks down Ansel. And that's all. And then it's a 12 page long scene. So you have room to explore, but you knew where that part was coming. Do you, do you improvise at all on set or do you kind of like once this, once the script is done, you stick specifically to the script? I think because the dialogue is so specific and the uh, and the world is so um, its own tone that it, it would be hard to kind of let people improv in that sort of space. Uh, the only improvised line that comes to mind on anything I've done, is, relatively speaking, is uh, in self defense. Jesse's character like uh, interrupts these guys, and then uh, there's this like machismo sort of thing between them. And one of the other guys says, "We should do push-ups." Uh, and Je- that was one of the like guys. Uh, we he, I said, "Say something like about working out or whatever." And then he yeah. said, "We should do push-ups." And that line I get credit for now, but I didn't write it. And it's the closest thing that I've got to improv in my movies. But uh, Karen would do these things that we on, on Duel we would call or she called fun runs where she has to be so mannered and specific uh, in most takes. But then after we would get what we needed, if we were on schedule or ahead of schedule, she would go, can I do a fun run? And would be her improv scene, uh, version nice. of it or trying something outlandish. And then inevitably she would always uh, finish it and then go, yeah, hey, you're never going to use that. But it was important for her to feel that she's an improvising sort of actor. And uh, I think every once in a while to give her that like freedom to try something w- was important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. interesting. I do. I call it, yeah, fun run. I, I always say, do a take for you. That's what I yeah. would say. Yeah. So you now you can use fun run. Inspired and wants to get it out. Poop. It's like Jack Nicholson. It's like, never use his fun take. You know what I exactly. mean? Like, because then he's going to go <laughs> and go crazy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like what he did in Departed. And he, of course, he used that take and it's like, <laughs> you know, um, yeah, I, I've I've done the do one for you before, but I've never had somebody be so specific about that being 
an important part of their process. Like Karen's such a performer and such a comedian that uh, it was, I think it was actually important for her to feel like every once in a while she got to have a laugh. Yeah. Like yeah. instead of playing it flat, she got to be big and make the crew laugh. And then I would feel good because she felt good. And then every once in a while you'd be like, well, maybe it's going to lead to something. And, and I don't think there's a fun run in the movie, but I think that we tried a couple of things in the edit and we're like, I don't know. It's not bad. It's just like not exact. Yeah. Interesting. That's cool. Do you, um, I guess like, um, writing wise, like, do you, when, how, when you work out the film in your head, like how, how are you able to kind of decipher? I mean, this is kind of a really vague question, but maybe you can have like an anecdote for it. But like, like, for example, like I, whenever I'm in that problem solving phase, I think the reason I write a draft one is because like, I can't like see a movie really unless I kind of write it. Like I can see it. I can see the emotion. I can see people's reactions. I can see the control I have of people's feelings, but like there's like certain like working nuggets that just sort of like, I can't really see until I write it. And then I know something's wrong. It's sort of like this weird. So like, it sounds like you do all of that math when you're doing the indexing and stuff and working it's, out. The, yeah. The it's less in my head. Like I think the head stuff is more an overall uh, story thing and then and, and beginning, middle and end sort of structure. And then it's the note cards where I get specific. And that's where, like you said, I start to see where the problem might arise and how can I fix that? And then prior to dual, I was doing outlines as well. So you get even more uh, specific, but I never wanted to be so specific that I would take away the excitement of writing the script itself too. So just always making sure that I left some fun uh, to discover later on. Nice. So cool. I'm not one of those people like like you hear Spielberg say even uh, this is talking about directing less than writing, but how he's able to visualize the entire movie in his head like he can watch it or, or Tarantino, I think, says that, too. Like, that's definitely not me. But uh, like you described, I have a version where there's specific scenes that I fully can. Like, I know exactly how that's going to look. Yeah. But uh, I yeah, I don't I don't like I'm not similar to I I can't know exactly what the writing is going to be like until I get there to that, that the script writing process. Uh, I don't really know what the edits fully going to look like until I get to that part too. It's it's like your your co-director is the film gods and you just understand, oh, this is film gods time. I'm going to like figure that out as I go, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you, I think sometimes you you can force yourself into a an area where you are so set on something and then something else feels more natural on the day, but you go against it because you've already got this idea in your mind. And, and I think that I, I'm, I would assume that on commercials, because everyone has to be fully on board with your vision and, and you've got a, you've got a lot of money at stake and it's a limited amount of time. You have to be more specific about that kind of stuff. But when you're on a feature and you get the opportunity to explore and try, try new things, I, I feel like that's part of the fun as well. Totally. Like that 12 page scene you were talking about in false, you know, it's like, yeah. you, it's like, Sometimes you can plan it, but sometimes you're just like, this is the most emotional part of my movie. Like I, like I kind of want to also just like see what happens, like in a table. Yeah, totally. Or, and see what the actors are going to bring to it as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's fascinating. Um, you know, I have, I have my kind of last question, but did you want to ask something? Um, I did want to ask a question regarding legacy. Like, do you ever think about that in terms of the legacy of films that you'll leave behind and what that means? at all? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's a, it's an interesting thing to think about because now that I'm three features in, I, I feel like I, well, a friend of mine said, uh, after he saw duel, he was like, you, you've got a filmography now. Like I think at three films, it feels like a filmography. And I wonder, I'm, I'm all I can think about is the next thing and, and what that's going to be. And, and I've definitely put some pressure on myself this time around that I didn't feel before. Uh, and I don't know if that's because, dual is is a little bit trickier for people to pin down and it's not going to be for everybody and and how does that affect the next film or, or if it's just that i i want to make things that uh like i want to continue to make things so like what what is that going to be but i i have started thinking more about man where am i going to be in 10 years and 20 years and then what are people going to think of the movies that i've made and uh, i i feel very fortunate that i've made three in a row that are very very me and i've gotten to make choices that like yeah. people didn't have to let me make, but they did. Uh, I want to continue to make stuff that is in my voice and in this sort of uh, it, it, that are just like Riley films. But um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. The legacy question I, I think is, is still tricky because then it, it also makes you feel like, well, of course I'm going to be around and people are going to be thinking about my stuff and I don't know, maybe they won't. But uh, so far I, I feel like what's been cool is that each thing I make, 
people go who are new to it, go back and say, Oh, I wonder what he did before that. And then that film, they're like, Oh, there's another film before that. So I think faults is always finding a new audience. Self-defense is definitely finding its audience and continuing to get passed around. Uh, and I hope the, the same, I, I, we're not going to have an opening weekend, like everything everywhere all at once. Like that's a one in a million sort of uh, story. And they're, I'm so happy for the Daniels, but like, for for duel, I know that it's going to be a slow slow journey. It's a slow build, uh, and I am okay with that. Yeah, yeah. It's, I, it's, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, oh no, I was going to say I, I just I, I do have one more question. Like, um, and what what do you think makes you want to continue shooting films? Um, I mean, it's fun. At the end of the day, I like getting to have this outlet. I love. I don't know. If I hadn't found jujitsu uh, and have that like other thing that I care about, I don't know if I would feel the same way about films. I feel like people are maybe just me, but I feel like there's there's a risk of burnout and uh, stress and and just throwing everything at something that actually takes a long time to put together and kind of come together, especially yeah. when you're writing your own stuff. Um, but I, I want it. I just, I like being on set. I like working with other people. I think that's my favorite part of it all is seeing everyone come together and bring your vision to life. Yeah. Like there, that I get to go around and, and uh, go to film festivals and talk about the movie and, and it represents me and I represent it, but the people who are on set, like they do their job and they have a good time, obviously. And, and, and there's challenges that come uh, that are associated with it, but then they, don't get to travel with the movie. They don't get to like reap the rewards of it. And so the fact that people value the project enough or value my vision that they want to do a good job, despite the fact that that's not really going to benefit them in the same sort of way. <laughs> yeah. It's still mind blowing to me. And I, I am so incredibly humbled every time I get on a set and work with other people. Do nice. you think that um, jujitsu gave you more? Um, how do I say this? I guess for lack of a better term, more of like a Zen perspective on like your filmmaking career in general. I don't know how it relates to it directly, um, if I'm honest, but I do know that confidence has come from that. And I think that confidence also breeds patience. And I'm sure that there's there's a through line and there's like, if you look at an alternate reality version of me, like an alternate dimension, you would be able to tell the difference between the two Rileys, the one that found jujitsu and the one that didn't. But uh, uh, I think that in general, it's helped me be a better person in kind of every uh, facet of my life. And, and it's impossible to think that that would not also influence my, my work in film. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, um, you know, I guess I have a question. that's kind of more just like business focused, but like, sure. you know, I, first of all, it's kind of goes into it. But when you were talking about sort of the legacy in uh, response to the, the question, like, I think what I love about your work as like a filmmaker watching it, not just the audience, but like as a filmmaker watching it and knowing, you know, knowing you ish, like I, I, I love what you do because I love how, you know, like I, my issue is, is I'm always, I've got like seven movies, like seven movies. And it's like, which one goes, which one goes, what's timing, yeah. what's timing. And that's always been my thing. My, my issue is oh, never is, is, is the opposite of you where you go, uh, what's the next movie? That's what I'm working on. It's like yeah. not that at all. It's like I got a million movies, you know what I mean? And it's just like whatever happens. And and, and you know, there's a million people that do it that way. There's a million people that do it your way. And like what I love about what you do is like I love that you are there's there's such a uniqueness to how you get a movie made, who you choose to be in it. Uh, you know, like even like I, I'm not even think like price point or anything, but just like you you make a movie where it's like it doesn't feel like I even like even care about how much co it costs to make the movie, you know, like you just, you just do you. And I think like, that's why the question of legacy is always weird. Cause it's just like you, like someone like you, I feel like, you know, you have to be strong to just continue to be you because if anything sort of starts itching at you with ego and narcissism and all that other shit, it's like, it kind of fucks with the way I feel your three movies are is that like, they just feel like, you entering the next phase of your life and this movie somehow is some representation of it who knows how it's decoded yeah. or how you know so like i guess like on a business wise like like what do you what is what sort of your strategy is there is there kind of a like i know this is my next movie do you kind of keep it a secret and then when you hit that first draft you go cool i'm going to send it to my producer or this other producer or here are these other people like 
I guess like, what's the sort of like, if this is the creative side we've been talking about, like what, like give us an example, a walkthrough of like how maybe faults or your second movie were made where you kind of reached out to people you knew or who were your acquaintances that you knew could like build your army to soup you up to go get it, like finance, et cetera, et cetera. Cause you seem so good at it and functional Thanks. and like very just diligent and you just make it happen and, and you just seems like you manifest it. So I, I'm just curious as somebody. I, I use the word luck time. and I know that that's, that's unfair to myself on, on, on often times. Like I, I know that it's not just luck, but I do consider myself lucky that I've been able to make the things that I've been able to make and have them be such personal films and such specific films. Uh, but I'm, I'm very lucky that I may, met the people to make them. So I briefly can go through like how each one happened. I was at Sundance with uh, the artist, or sorry, with the cub and uh, the producers who ended up making faults saw it there and said, when you get back to LA uh, or when we get back in like two weeks, we should meet up and talk about what you want to do next. If you have any feature ideas. And I had the idea for fa uh, faults. I had the outline written. And so I got back to LA, gave myself a day off, and then I got straight to writing. And I wrote that script in, in that two week span pitched them the film at the, uh, at the meeting, and then uh, was able to send them the script like that day. And so they read it. They were the first people to read it. And they were also the, the people who said yes. And so that one was just like serendipitous. Like I met the people right away who ended up making that film and taking it, who took a huge chance uh, making a first time feature, uh, uh, like in, in, in finding me and, and saying that they trusted that. Um, that movie obviously was very small. didn't make like that much money, but it, screen media bought it. They were very happy and they see it as a long-term like legacy sort of thing that people are always going to come back to. Uh, I figured self-defense would be a little easier to get made, but if anything, it was harder. Uh, it, I at least had a feature behind uh, me so that people could watch and say, he understood how to do this. He's been through it before. I trust him with this bigger project. But um, I think the tone was very uh, challenging for a lot of producers. And uh, frankly, I don't think a lot of people got it. I think I, I, there was one producer who specifically said something that I think probably a lot of people thought, but they weren't saying. But she was like, I have a hard time imagining you uh, making karate look cool. And I was like, OK, that's not the idea behind self-defense. It's not a make, let's make karate look cool movie. It's a comment on masculinity and uh, thoughts and fears of that men feel about being men and not being, being enough of a man. And so it wasn't until NQ came into the picture, they were the first people to read it and they, they really liked it, but they were going to do another movie. Um, and then when that movie fell apart and the director went off and did Spider-Man, they, I went back to them and said, are you still maybe looking to do something with self-defense? Would you like to? And they said, fuck it, let's do it. So NQ was literally the only company that wanted to make that movie. And I got very lucky that they also happened to have some financing for it. So our $1.5 million budget on that movie was not too much of a stretch for them. And then when we sold it to Bleecker, uh, they sold it for more than what we made it for. So they, the company immediately was happy and then ended up making two million or two and a half million at the box office. So then Bleecker was happy. And so I had two sort of pseudo successes and again, thought Duel would be super easy to get made and it ended up being a, a difficult one too, because I would meet with people who liked it and who are fans of the art of self-defense, but then wanted to change the ending specifically was a thing that uh, was on some people's minds or just in general, didn't get the tone and were very upfront with me, which is totally fine. I just wanted to work with people who wanted to make what I wanted to make. And uh, eventually XYZ ended up being that production yeah. company where they just said, look, we will give you final cut. We're going to give you some notes. You don't have to take any of them. They kept every promise that they made and then some, and I would work with them again in a heartbeat. They made you, more films by filmmakers. Did you work with Pip? Uh, Pip was one of the people. He was he was at the very first meeting that I ever had where they, they said that they wanted to read it. And uh, Nate Balotin was also at that meeting. And Panos yeah, Cosmetos yeah. was the the person oh. who introduced me to all of them. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, you, like, I like XYZ. They're, they're, they're they're love, they love to be scared by a movie and that's the movies they make. It's kind of <laughs> yeah. cool. Yeah. yeah. Do you ever get beaten down by the bureaucracy in the film world? I luckily don't experience a lot of it. Um, if I'm honest, I feel like I, if anything, I get annoyed seeing some of my friends and peers go through it, uh, particularly women. Um, I have read scripts from friends who I'm like, how is this not getting made? And I think if anything, the more I, more like, I don't know, uh, I get in terms of my career and, uh, and a little bit of freedom, the more I want to be able to give back and help, even if it's like, 
a filmmaker who has made more stuff than me. If I am at a point in my career where it, my name helps for anything, I want to be involved and try to like pay it forward. Um, but specifically after, like, I, I would love to help people make their first feature. Like that's where I really want to be. But I think I've been very fortunate that my stuff tends to, uh, has tended to find its home with the right people. I love my agency, uh, or sorry, my agents, I guess I should say. I love my manager. Um, I feel like people give me the space that I need and I don't feel like I need my hand held. Um, but when I need something, when, when I'm ready to go out with a script and, and, and show it to people, uh, I feel like I'm supported. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. I know that's yeah. like, you know, that's like sort of the BTS that people don't like talking about sometimes. Totally. You know? Yeah. It's sort of like ugly, not cool side, but like, they don't teach you that. They don't teach you that 75% of getting a movie made has to do with like very little with like you as the creative, you know? So it's, uh, There's I, so much that goes on behind the scenes, obviously. And I think that those meetings, while frustrating, I've been able to kind of just say, eh, they, they weren't the right company for me. And that's fine. And maybe we'll work together on something in the future, but this wasn't their project. And I try not to get offended uh, or beaten down by it. I'm just like, kind of like right now, I, I think the, the reviews on, on Duel are pretty positive overall, but there's some people who it's just never going to be for. And similarly with companies, when you go meet with those companies, you're like, doesn't mean that it's a knock against, uh, like, it's not like they're saying it's bad. It's just not for them. And that's, that's okay. Not my stuff tends to not be for everyone. And I, if anything, I've been surprised that faults and self-defense were as re well reviewed as they were because they're so specific, but I'm starting to now see with something very specific, like dual, like, Oh, not everyone's into this and that's okay. And I, I think if anything, the, uh, the, the, like I use mixed, it's not even a mixed review sort of situation. We're still positively reviewed. I just see a little bit more of that mix happening now. And I think it's because I've kind of doubled down on what I like in, in my movies. And that's fucking great. Like I, I, I'm a big fan of like, I want a 65% on Rotten Tomato. I don't, I don't yeah. want to, I don't want to go down to a 50, but like, I don't need no 90, you know, I was and kind I of hoping like for for like a, uh, I mean, uh, what's it, uh, certified fresh on this one? I thought that that was. I was like, well, that's kind of crazy. I think as of today, we will probably dip below that seventy five percent, which is fine. Uh, like you said, the sixty five is. I some of my favorite movies are in that space. It's the conversation. It's the conversation starter percentage. Yeah, and you know? and if as long as people are having a reaction to it, I'm not getting. I mean, I'm, I'm getting some people who are like neither here nor there. But for the most part, it's either I love it or I hate it. And there's something fun about that. No, I think that's great. I think that it's a lot of the movies that like I hate first, I end up learning to love. And then there's some movies that I just yeah. like full on always hate. But like I, I enjoy having an extreme emotion because it challenges me as like a creative, but also just as a person. You know, it's kind of like when everyone hates a Kubrick movie. It was like classic syndrome of people just didn't like themselves. That's usually yeah. why you hated a Kubrick <laughs> movie. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, totally. so I think that like you being able to chat. And I think, you know, Yorgos does that too. You know, like I think that the comparison is not really there for me. I can see an influence. I can see that, but it's like, no, like maybe because I know you, there's a specificity, but I think there is, there is a very disciplined thing about your films that like feel you. Like, it's like, there is quirkiness that people can kind of associate yeah. to others, but it's because there's not a lot of people that can make that work. So their yeah. pool that they can pull from is not a lot. So it's like, yeah. it's going to sound like people saying like, it's when people fucking say I'm like a Michael Bay or a JJ. I'm like, what the hell? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? Like, like, but it's like, because they're just like, you're crazy. You're fast. And you know, you like, you yeah. want to be big and all this crap. And I'm just like, I don't understand. You know, like, it's that's so not funny. me at all. You know? <laughs> yeah. It's either, it's either for me, it's a uh, Wes Anderson or Yorgos. And I feel like, yeah, I like both of them, but I'm also very much just Riley. Like that's, I, I think my stuff, like you, you mentioned it earlier. I, I feel like I've got a brighter sensibility than your ghost. I think his stuff tends to be more oppressively dark in a way that he's a little, I love. He's, a little, like a, he's an angrier person. I think. He's an angrier yeah. person, but he also is a very nice person from everything I understand. And yeah. like he does his own style too. So like, I like that my stuff has a brighter outlook, maybe even though it tends to be pretty dark uh, to some people. Um, and I, I think I just have an overt, I think I, I'm a little bit more overtly funny. Um, I think he's hilarious. I think his writing is hilarious and the way the performances he gets are, are just amazingly funny, but it's a very different type of funny. I think that mine borders more on humor, humor rather than. That yeah. Well, I think I don't actually internal. think his humor is intentional. Like I literally think he's, he acts the way he acts and then you, it's either funny or it's not. 
You know what I mean? Like, I actually do believe he's just weird. <laughs> you know? Or I think you, you kind of have, you, you understand your knobs, but you're, you're, you have like a, like a little, like a, like a piece of tape where you're like, I'm not going past. I'm not going to go past that. Yeah. You know? exactly. and then this is or like you give yourself like a, a few moments where you can go past it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I do think that there are jokes in my movies. It's just that they're not delivered in a joke sort of yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. Which is the best oh, yeah, comedy. There's... The best comedy is just treating everything. I love the comedy in your funny. in your films. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> yeah, they're they're great. <laughs> cool. Um, and I love the delivery too. I guess like closing wise, like um, I don't. I mean, unless you want to take this, you know, like I I'm I I feel like you know, I guess maybe just kind of figuring out like when you're done with the film and technically you've been done for a while, so like you yeah. you're already your brain's already like moving on to something, but like if we could transport, cause for the listeners there, th- this is literally this movie coming out now is you right now. So if you could transport to like, after you're like, all right, like the, the nails, you know, in the coffin, it's, I got nothing. I can't, you know, the world it's the world's now, like what, if you were to transport to that mind state, what's like, what do you do next? After this weekend, I think I'll have an easier time thinking about the next thing, but I, I had a, I have an idea for something that I've been sitting with now for a few months um, that I'm realizing more and more may not be the next thing. And I think that that's been kind of confusing because I, I thought that that would be the idea. But I'm wondering now how, like, because I'm about to go into that mode of like, I really need to figure out the next idea and I need to start writing. But I... I also wonder how the release of this movie is going to influence that that creative process and where I'm going to go from there. So I I, uh, I guess after this weekend I'll be more in that in that mindset. And I it it's weird because it's like still pretty much just the normal state of mind for me, but I'll have a specific directive because right now all I'm thinking about is releasing this movie, and I think that that takes up most of my brain power and and. I can't fully focus on the next thing until that's out there. But uh, uh, Monday, I'll probably have this this like drive that I maybe don't have today. And it'll be interesting to see that because I, it's happened every time. You just like a little switch happens and you go, all right, time to get back to work. And uh, I'm, I'm ready for that work. Nice. That's great. I love I love that. That's that's a very Zen thing. Just kind of keep moving, you know, like, you know, there's those filmmakers who literally just refuse to watch their own movies. And like you hear some directors when they go on a commentary, they go, I haven't seen this in 20 years. And yeah. here we go. And it's just it's so fascinating because I'm like, maybe because movies like when maybe when I make my first movie, I'll be like, yeah, I'm not going to watch my movie again. Two hours. I don't think so. You yeah. know, like that's a lot of time. So maybe that's what it is. But it's like, nah, I'll I'll catch myself going through my like my work just to like educate myself of where I've come I think from, it's smart. You yeah. Know? It's not for everybody, but I think that especially if you make something that has a sense of humor, like your, your stuff has, I think you'll want to experience that with an audience for one thing. And then you'll also probably, like you said, you go back and you go like, I'm, I'm impressed that I did that that way. And like, I'm proud of my, my old self for doing this or whatever it is. I, I like, I like revisiting things. I would love to uh, watch faults with an audience again someday and be able to be like, Oh man, 10 years later, this plays, so differently, but it's still cool to see where I was when I was 26 and made that. So, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yoshino, anything? Yeah. No, I mean, thanks for, thanks for doing this, man. I know you've been doing a lot of interviews and yeah, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time to, to talk to us, you know? I uh, know. I'm glad that you guys reached out about it. Cause I, uh, like, like I said, it's nice to have, there's certain things that are, are good to end on. I had a, a really nice uh, conversation with some people last night for a podcast that were, I got to talk about movies in a way that didn't feel as like rehearsed and, and uh, I got questions that I hadn't gotten. And then this, again, it's just like a conversation with friends. It's so much nicer uh, to end this way than it would be to do the junket style thing of it all. So I appreciate y'all having me on. Of yeah. course. And, and I would love anytime. To, yeah, I would man. Love, yeah. And I'd love to stay in touch and find out how Monday goes, the light switch, you know? Yeah. The, yeah. And, and now that we're out of COVID too, and in, in a, in a, to a certain extent, it, like I, you said, like we haven't seen each other in a couple of years or, or a little bit longer. And yeah, it's part of that is because everyone was like <laughs> fully locked down. So totally. Yeah. I think last yeah. time I saw you, it was like a taco place. You're yeah. Like, yeah. I was on, like I was on a, a date or something. I was on a date and I was, yeah. like, oh, and you, I was like, what's up? Yeah. Yeah. It's totally. so funny. Yeah. Riley's <laughs> inviting you to jujitsu. 
Yeah. yeah, I mean, I'm always that's all that invite's always there. <laughs> yeah, Yoshino and I go to this place called like the yard. We have I don't know. I'm sure Yoshino's gone a couple more times. I haven't gone since like 2019. I haven't I haven't been there for a but while. I, but I would love yeah. to go. But, that, that, but that's a Muay Thai place. You were yeah. doing the Muay Thai. That's right. Our, our school has Muay Thai too. We've got a pretty great program. So it's Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. So if you ever nice. want to come in and throw some, uh, some yeah, maybe I'll just go to your gym so I have friends. Yeah, gloves, yeah. Yoshino's exactly. my only friends. Go. I was like scared of everybody else. There's like this one Russian gangster guy that I like because he just seemed like he deals drugs. Yeah. But like you know, he was like very loved loving guy it was just like what's up would you like to do this with me you know and yeah. I, I love that attitude because like i like when everyone like suddenly can switch to talk about mario party on the switch yeah and they destroy each other you know this this now, place is great i feel like uh you you would get along with people there it's um i don't know where you live right now but it's uh sunset and normandy basically yeah. uh, five, five star right uh, it's, sean yeah, it's, it, they they sean moved to nashville um oh, so okay. he started a, a school there but uh uh hit a lot of his black belts uh kind of partnered up and oh, bought okay. it from cool, him man. and so i teach every friday like i actually normally would be teaching right now but i i got a black belt to cover for me and nice. um uh yeah the the school is called henzo gracie los angeles so it's it's not five star anymore but it's the same oh, okay everything else. oh cool man yeah. nice yeah cool. great cool man well yeah let's stay, let's stay in touch and yeah thank you that. and all the listeners go watch duel go watch it and and, and <laughs> right now it, be offended whatever the fuck you want to feel feel it yeah yeah put that get that let's get that audience score a little lower than it is right yeah, now let's get it that, it is, let's get it you know? it's yeah the, it's the yeah. thing all right all right buddy i love you riley y'all you're later special, you're such a special person i love talking you guys rule thank you so much for having you me too, that was man. great all right take bye, care. bye.